Welcome to the second episode of our Sleepaway series, everyone. This episode, we finish up our character creation as well as fleshing out our camp a bit more. But before we get to the episode, here's what to expect in our call to action. Yep. After the show, Amelia has a reminder about her guest spot on the Mad Dungeon podcast. I've got word that there is some Starwall Odyssey of the Lucky Finn content out in the wild. And there's the usual podcast sign offs and patron thank yous, as well as a new review. Definitely stay tuned for that. We love reviews. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the show, we wanted to just thank all of our patrons for your support. Your contributions helped get a new mic for Ryan, which mm. he's very excited about. And if you ask him about it, he will tell you all kinds of things about and it. And it'll sound fantastic it's, when I... <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be great. Um, as well as favor the services that we use to make this podcast. So um, Zoom, Dropbox, our websites, all kinds all that of stuff fun like stuff. that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we really, really do appreciate your assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, please enjoy the show, everyone. time on Character Creation Cast, we created a well-funded LARP summer camp together, complete with a kissing grove, stargazing field, and a performance stage. Nicole was creating a lifeguard named Baron. Amelia was creating a crafter named Soliloquy. And I was creating a song leader named Margaret James Smith. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right. So now we're on to looks, it looks like. Is it Margaret hyphen James or is yes. it just? Okay. okay. Margaret hyphen James <laughs> Smith. <gasps> Are there some little campers who call you like Margaret hyphen James? <laughs> I hope so. I sure hope so. <laughs> it's just a little tiny one. Uh-huh. Just a Margaret James. Margaret hyphen James. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that camper already. <laughs> That's Toby. Oh. I have to say. Oh. Oh. oh, sweet little Toby. <laughs> yeah. Sweet Toby. That's his first year. <laughs> Margaret Huff and James. Because <laughs> one of the things I do is, even though it's not part of character creation, I, you want to have campers to populate your camp. So everybody has to create a camper too, which is a different process. But mm -hmm. I feel okay. we've already created, we've already got Toby. They just yeah. come up. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so next we each have to describe our look. Yep. Um, so my, my options here, my list anyway. Uh, gleaming eyes, mismatched eyes, bright eyes, honest eyes, exhausted eyes. Um, I think I want to go with gleaming eyes. I like that one. I like that. Yeah. What about for you, Nicole? I have watchful eyes, warm eyes, hardened eyes, or watery eyes. I think I'm going to go with watchful eyes. Ooh. And I get to choose between curious eyes, thoughtful eyes, happy eyes, and gentle eyes. Oh. I went with gentle eyes. <laughs> of, course of course you did. Of course I, I did. I mean, that's very good, though. Mm-hmm. All right. And then scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I've got I've got a body look as well. Mm-hmm. You yeah, pick I one of each. I'm trying to yeah. get they're this. so good too. I know. I love everything about um, this. So body look. Um round body, body built for listening, lanky body, or uncertain body. I like body built for listening. Mm. I don't okay. know what it means yet, but <laughs> I just, I just like, it's evocative of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go with, I have coiled body, leaf body, proud body, stocky body, and built like a wall. I'm really tempted by built like a wall, but I'm going to go with coiled body. Nice. Um, And I've got delicate body, fluid body, stable body, slow moving body, 
and body built for strong hugs. That's oh. the one you're going to pick. Mm-hmm. That is the one I picked. <laughs> that's, yep. a, that's a good uh, one, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Ryan, bless you. Uh, but <laughs> I, I was like, when I suggest this, I'm like, Ryan's going to be a song leader. And I kind of knew some of it already. Mm-hmm. 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 It's very good, though. It's very good. Yeah, never change, Ryan. No. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> describe your gender. I love uh, these. I know. They're so great. Um, yeah, I think we talked about these with Jay when we did um, Yuseba's Bed and Breakfast. Yeah. We talked about like some of the, the gender options that were in Sleepaway, too. They're the best. Um, priestess Femme. Grassland, a turtle, a cloud over the sun, a particular color, tree kisser. Uh, I'm obviously going to go with Priestess Femme. Yeah, I was figuring. I think that's, oh, you know. That's a good one. Like, I don't know what else I would, you know. For the lifeguard, I have Nice Boy, Wonder Woman, A Savior and a Saint, Eagle, Castle, Lighthouse in the Darkness, and Relatable. Oh. I think I'm going to go with Lighthouse in the Darkness. I like that one. Yeah. And I think I'm leaning towards they, them pronouns. Or, you know what, though? There is an amazing list of pronouns uh, in this book on page 19. So it's not just like there's a bunch of neo pronouns in there, too. Mm. And it's very good. Um, Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So like she, he, him, his, she, her, hers, they, them, theirs, a, m, air, they, zem, zer, j, gem, jers. Fay fair fairs, star star stars, and then like combinations or whatever. I also oh, like, I also like adding in the one from um, April, the creator of Thirsty Sword Lesbians about gay gem. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. But yes, there's mm-hmm. a wonderful list of pronouns, which we will probably need for other characters. But mm-hmm. I think Baron is going to be a they them. Very cool. All right. Uh, for my gender, I can choose between Blackberry Blossom. June Apple, Freight Train, Crawdad, Wagon Wheel, Quite Early Morning, and Blowing in the Wind. These are also good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the one that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know which way you're leaning. Not Freight Train. June Apple, but. June Apple's good. Quiet Early Morning, too. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to go with blackberry blossom you are but only because we said all the other things <laughs> no. <laughs> no that's actually the one i wanted uh because it, it feels like um like this character has a little bit of an edge uh, oh. uh to it but so hidden but they're, yeah. they're, they're all sweetness and prettiness and just the tiniest hidden thorn yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go she they pronouns for her oh boy I'm looking at the next one. Childhood mm-hmm. fear. fear. They're so good. They're all so everything about this is so good. I keep saying mm-hmm. that. And it's just uh. <laughs> um, let's see here. Back to my list. Choose your childhood fear. Flayed by wolves, drowning in a lake and no one hearing. Getting caught kissing someone you shouldn't. Teeth falling out and you can't explain why. The plot of Home Alone. <laughs> 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 um let's see here i'm gonna go with drowning in the lake and Ooh, no one hearing that oh that's sounds good terrifying hey right it sounds awful yeah i also i mean i do frequently as a person have nightmares that my teeth are falling out but i think that's actually pretty common yeah mm-hmm. that's good though i like that it ties together because like i'm looking forward to like our questions we ask each other too <sighs> Yeah. So it's so good. Ooh. Yeah. I th- I just feel like drowning in the lake and then there being a lifeguard seems like it's going to be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. These characters. Oh, Tang- I'm looking forward to tangling our, our characters together so much. Yes. So choose your childhood fear for the lifeguard. Wolves that kidnap your friends. Diseases undetected until it's too late. Being excluded. Small insects that live in your ears. Ooh. A current too fast to outswim. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go for yeah. current too fast to outswim. Mm. The the insects one is my <laughs> current fear. Mm, yep. <laughs> nope. So yeah. Nope. I, nope. I usually have a veil in my games. I'm like, mm, pretty bugs okay. Like Miyazaki would describe it. Cool. We'll have it. If it's a horror bug, no, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. I'm like, how how prominent are the legs, right? Yeah. And th- th- yeah, like it's like, and I think I'm like, I don't mind bugs. Like if they're pretty, like if they're fat bumblebees mm-hmm. or like Little pretty butterflies. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, if it's Miyazaki like animating this bug, I'm probably going to be into it. Well, so. right. I, I, it it also depends on where the bug is. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's In fair. relation to me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this idyllic bug or horror bug? So. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my childhood fear selections are distant howling only you can hear. Oof. Nobody being able to see or hear you. Mm. Going to sleep and never waking up. Your own face in the mirror, or all of these. Oh, I chose all of these because <gasps> oh. that sounds interesting. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, but that your own face in the mirror was like, oh, that's good. And then I saw the all of these, and I'm like, I just gotta take that. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go for it. Just yeah. go for it. Lead in. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. There's so much you can do with that, too. And I, one of my favorite things is like the, the running theme of Wolf and all the characters. Like, it's so yeah. good. Like, you can really build like a really united game with this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think the next couple uh, are different for each character. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, looks like based on our. Um... I play book. Yeah. Um, so mine is choose your craft. Um, is it augury? Is yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Like I've seen it written, but I haven't. I'm like <laughs> Googling. I'm like, how do you say this word? <laughs> augury, um, which is uh, like interpretation of omens. Yeah. Um, rune magic, hexes and blessings, staring at fire, embodied spellcraft, dream journeys. Promises, protective wards. Ooh. Um, I'm torn between hexes and blessings and protective wards. I feel like mm. staring at fire just seems cool because it doesn't. It's not like clear what it is. Right. Well, I think like that's like the real cool thing is like you can interpret that. Like, well, I'm gonna stare yeah. at the fire and will this into being or you know see the future. Yeah. There's a lot there. Honestly, though, for like a role play perspective, I feel like augury has a lot of potential. Oh yeah, of like, <gasps> oh, would soliloquy... being like this means this, especially yeah. in a GM list game. Yeah, like I think that that would be a really fun one. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna pick that. Cool. I mean, you know what? I think we should just do the next two, like the do the two, sure. the, just because it makes sense to keep them together. Okay. Um, choose two traits of the craft. It cannot be used to lie. It cannot be used to spill blood. It cannot cause death in any form. It cannot be used with modern technology. It cannot be taught easily. It cannot be repeated. Um, I'm going to pick it cannot be used to lie because we also put like honesty as one of our oh, that's camp so traits good. too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... I also want to say it cannot be used with modern technology, and maybe that's part of why I work at this camp. Oh, since we don't really allow that here anyway. Yeah. So is it that it's like a place the... where I can actually practice my craft? Oh. So <laughs> like the like all like the like the signals and everything interrupt everything, or? Yeah, I think so. Oh, cool. I think you know, like the ability to Google things, and you know, like sort of yeah. skews. The way we view like signs and omens and things, because ah, we can look up what it means, right? But it's not right. what it means, right? Not necessarily. Oh, yeah, that's good. I like that. Very nice. Okay, for the lifeguard, I choose an outside relationship: a little brother who misses you, a best friend who used to work here, a support game, an old house you think of home, and a fa- or a family. And I went with a little brother who misses you. Oh. Yeah. Choose what keeps you working here. The kids, your friends and the staff, the land, the chance to save people. You've forgotten why, but want to remember. I'm like, oh, this is good. Oh. <laughs> oh. I want all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the chance to save people. Mm. I like it. Very good. All right, and then for the song leader, 
I have to choose your singing voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so my options are strong and grounded like an anchor, warm and welcoming like an embrace, playful and meandering like a chase through tall grass, intimate and honest like a promise to a friend, haunting and full like the moon reflected in the lake. Okay. Um, two of these stood out to me the most. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to lean into the honesty thing as well and go intimate and honest. Oh, I like a promise to a friend. Oh, that's I love it. Yeah. Um, so it seems like we have the sort of honesty theme going on in yeah. this so far. Um, so now I have to choose two songs. Um, and my options are group song, no outside force could ever interrupt. Story song, campers always listen to in quiet, rapt focus. Hiking song that always gives the tired and weak a boost of energy. Traditional song that provides insight into the camp's history. Or a cyclical song that always brings the camp dog running. Interesting. I think I want the first two. So uh, a group song, no outside force could ever interrupt. And a story song, campers always listen to in quiet, wrapped focus. Those are so good. Like that, like, especially like, because, you know, we, we have to fight the lindworm. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's so like, wow. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I love these characters already. I'm so excited <laughs> for the next part. The next part's my absolute favorite. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, this is where we start, like, yeah, complicating it. That's so good. Yeah. All right. So it says ask two in total to other players. Uh huh. So we've got two other players for no. each of our perspectives. So that seems uh, good. Pretty neat. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. So I want to read all the questions mm-hmm. just so that people listening can can see what the options are here, even though we're only going to ask two of them. Mm-hmm. Why do I keep falling in love with you? How did you rescue me? Why did you abandon the craft? Oh, they're so good. Oh, yeah. Um. So do I just like throw these out and whoever wants to answer them can or it's up am to I you. asking specifically? I, you know what? I do want to point out that. Um, I might read my questions first because this might direct you a little. Okay. Because mine are, how did I metamorphically save you from drowning? Mm -hmm. Are you still in love with me? When's the last time we fought? Mm. And I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to go with those top two first. So. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll throw my questions out there as well, uh, just for the sake of completion. Um, Why did we grow apart all those years ago? What? Son best represents our relationship and what have you said to me but never to anyone else <gasps> they're so good oh my gosh goodness mm-hmm. okay so what are you thinking amelia i want to ask why did you abandon the craft who are you asking that of uh, i want to ask you nicole okay oh uh, i have to think about this because uh, i feel like ryan's like song leader has like a little bit of like sort of like magical quality to it Mm -hmm. Um, right but i feel like yours is more like of a practical kind of yeah yeah i'm very um, much into like the protecting people and it's augury right yeah and it can't be used to lie Mm -hmm. and what was the second one um it cannot be used with modern technology oh i oh gosh um i i lied I lied about Ooh. something, um, you know, like it's like I'm like I maybe to, I don't know if it was to save someone or to hurt someone, but I lied about something and oh. the craft stopped working and um, I I didn't think I could use it to save people either. So I was like, this isn't this isn't good. I don't like it. Like it's. Mm. Uh, yeah. Interesting. OK. Um. And then, Ryan, I'm going to ask yeah. you, Margaret James, how did you rescue me? Um, gosh, what? Hmm. Like, did you maybe get lost at some point? 
perhaps in the woods mm. and like <gasps> you heard my singing yes. <gasps> and that led you back um or um yeah no that works oh that works. But, I was looking at my my childhood fear of drowning in a lake and no one hearing and trying yeah. to see if there's a way that we could <gasps> well, connect those. Were you were you, were you want because the lake when we get to it the lake is not a good force. Like was the lake yeah. like calling you in and you were wandering towards the lake and yeah, you heard what, yeah you heard Margaret James like singing. Yeah, and I like what, that. I kind of like that. I like that you were you were just in a daze walking towards this lake and then like. You, it's those lake sirens. Yeah, you mm-hmm. hear me singing, uh, and then you you kind of wake out of it, and you're like waist deep in the water. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. That's good. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> I also, just real quick before anybody else goes into their questions, I do want to read the tips okay. here yep. as we go through, too, um, which I like the, the tips for role playing here, I think. Um, act like you know more about what's going on than you do. Remember that the magic is subtle, not loud, and most believe it doesn't exist. Make your character fallible and relatable. Mm. I so love good. it. It's so good. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to ask Baron. Baron, I was going to ask Soliloquy, how did I save you from metamorphically drowning? Ooh. Um, I think because... Like, we've established that you abandoned the craft at some yeah. point. That means that you are aware of it. And, like, you do yeah, I know have, it exists. Yeah, I'm going to say that you saved me from metaphorically drowning by, like, like it got to a point where I was, like, trying to read everything uh. as an omen of something to the point where, like, I felt like I couldn't just, like, nothing meant anything what it meant, you know? And mm. that you were at some point like, okay, you need to chill like this you know like the fact that it's raining just means there's right. water in the air yeah like <laughs> this Wait. means that the, the water cycle is working it right. doesn't <laughs> you know they ran out of blue napkins and they moved on to the yellow that's it that's just what they that's grabbed it. at the store right. sometimes it is just sometimes it's just what you see in front of you right yeah pasta was on sale this week it's fine yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like it was at a point where it was like starting to get obsessive and, you know, like anxious and all that kind of stuff. And you were like, okay, take a breath. (laughs) I like that. And Soliloquy is she, her? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then uh, to Margaret James, Mm -hmm. are you still in love with me? Oh, what a good leading question. Right. (laughs) Um. I'm going to say that that feeling never went away. Uh, depend uh, and and I, I I like answering it that way because it doesn't tell that we're still together or if we were ever together or right whatever. Right. Right. Like it's just oh, is it a will they won't they? Is it uh, like, you know, we keep going uh-huh. breaking apart and coming back together? Is it yeah. is it something's keeping us apart? Mhm. Oh, it's so good. I wonder if we'll find out with uh when with we get to our questions. fanfic. Yeah. Oh, that oh. too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I I and, do like that a lot. Yeah. Um so what and are it, the tips on yours then? I was just going to read them. Make strong choices to not help people when you should or vice versa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep coming back around even if you should leave. Make your cal- character fallible and relatable. Oh, so good. Oh, those are so good. Right? I love that it encourages you to, like, make choices that are almost, like, contrary to right? your playbook. Right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Ugh. That's so good. <laughs> They're so good. Okay. So, let's see. Um, I was looking, thinking about leaning into my last two questions because I didn't want to grow apart from anybody, like, explicitly in the okay. past um so uh what song best represents our relationship um i'm gonna throw that to uh soliloquy oh you're gonna make me like name a song now I too well, i don't know like it's... like you could maybe describe a song yeah as well it was i think that's like the hardest question in the book uh-huh. and, and i knew that 
<laughs> Ryan was going to do that right? to you too. Um, like as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh no. Uh, um, gosh. So now I have to like define what our relationship is too. Uh, it is, okay. That is a hard question. Goodness. Oh. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> but, um, well, do you want to ask Nicole or her question? Like while I'm trying to like. Yeah. I can do think that. Think about like what okay. this means and name it. And yes, okay. So we'll come back to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I'm gonna say, Baron, mm-hmm. what have you said to me, but never to anyone else, Baron? Baron asks for help. Ooh. Like Baron's like, I can't, I can't do it, Margaret James. I need, I need help. I can't save everyone. I love that. And you've never asked for help from anybody else? No. Oh, that's powerful. Okay. I like that a lot. What are are we Um, thinking soliloquy? So here's the thing. Yes. (laughs) I'm going to actually pick a a real song. Ooh. Um, But (laughs) I'm going to have this really big nerd moment. Please. Um, Because we are at this, like, fantasy Mm -hmm. uh, LARP camp. Yeah. Um. Okay, there's a song called El Grio, which is a Renaissance song. It's in Italian, um, written by a French composer for some reason. Um, but it translates to the cricket. Um, so, like, in English, the song lyrics are, The cricket is a good singer who can hold long notes. He sings all the time, but he isn't like the other birds. Once they've sung a little bit, they go somewhere else. The cricket stands firm when it's very hot out. He sings for the love of it. <gasps> mm. Oh, that's um, so good. That's very, song, very good. Um, yeah. So when I was in high school, I was in academic decathlon. <laughs> um, and <laughs> the theme my first year was the Renaissance. And this is one of the songs that we had to learn for it. Mm. Um, and I love, it's like a very short song, but... Um, trying to find it because i know it's in spotify i have it in a playlist because it's like this very sweet like peppy right tune too even though it's like a renaissance song but it's it's also very evocative like the it makes sense like too for like the setting yeah like mm-hmm. it stands firm and everything oh it's very good oh, I yeah it. here i'm gonna put a, a link to the um come on like in our little chat here little chat link um in the yeah in the zoom chat so dear listeners we'll see if we can get uh this link to el grillo yeah el grillo it's i mean it's a song from the renaissance i'm sure that at this point it's It's no no trademarks yeah (laughs) (laughs) you can you can use a little clip of it in our in our (gasps) title um you know because we always do the three songs oh yeah Yeah. so you could probably use a clip of it because it's oh that's cute um Oh, that'd be nice. Look at how everything ties together. This game is yeah. almost <laughs> creepy with how well things can tie together. Uh-huh. It's so good. Yes. I so like I have that. decided that is the song that represents our relationship, is that uh-huh. it is beautiful and continuing and still there even when it's hot out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're at a LARP camp in the summer, so that's right. very important. Uh-huh. Right, but also it's on theme because uh, right? it's our song from the Renaissance. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. Wonderful choice. Yeah. Thanks. All right. And my tips are describe your songs in terms of the imagery they invoke. Oh. Let your voice carry, but find places to lift up other voices too, especially those of less developed characters. And make your character fallible and relatable. So good. So should we read over our lures, which is how other people can gain tokens too, and then go over our moves? Because Amelia, you as the crafter have like my favorite move ever. Oh, let me get there. Trying to make notes for everybody too. So yeah, no character sheets later. I can right. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) we always say we're going to, and then we're really bad. (laughs) We just need Um, the time. Um, so I'm sorry, what am I reading? The lure? Mm-hmm. Lure. Every time someone questions your eccentric worldview, they get a token. Ooh. Yeah. As the laugh as the lifeguard, every time someone asks for your help to stay afloat, they gain a token. Ooh. Mm. 
Um, and then for the uh, for for the song leader, every time someone answers your voice with their own, echoing your words, sentiment, or tone exactly, they get a token. That's good. Wow. Um, do we want to just read off our our moves for everybody too? So yeah. They know what we've, yeah. 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 Because here, so we got strong moves, which Regular. cost a token. Mm-hmm. Regular moves, which you can just do. And then weak moves, which give you a token. So the, for those familiar with PBTA, it's, it's basically the strong moves are the 10 plus, regular moves are like seven to nine, and then weak moves are like six minus. And, mm-hmm. But you never roll. You just No, choose. you just pay. There's an economy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a token economy. And then mm-hmm. there's also the italicized ask, which are part of those. And those can be asked either in character or out of character. Oh, wow. Yeah. These are good. Okay, so my strong moves that cost a token. Get out of harm's way. Have a conversation defined by pure honesty, oh. which, again, I really love, given our, our camp theme. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that we're really embracing that. Remember or find something dreadfully important. Perform a spellcrafting ritual. Ask, does your character know I care? And are our characters going the right way? Okay. Um, do you want me to read my regular moves, or do we all want to go through our strong moves each first? I'm good either way. Let's let's go through all the moves uh, at once. Okay. Because okay. I think it I think it tells a nice, compelling yeah. Uh, yeah. story Perfect. of the character. Yeah. 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 Uh, my regular moves are take action, leaving yourself vulnerable. Listen to the magic and follow what it says. Give a friend an honest compliment. Teach someone a small charm for good luck. Ask, does your character want to talk about it? Oh, I love that, right? Mm-hmm. And my weak moves, invite the lindworm to act upon the group. Mm. Confess your love for someone in a way that's just awkward. That's my favorite move of all time. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> it's so good. Break one of the magic's rules. That's so good. Be temporarily abandoned by the magic. Oof. Ask, why doesn't your character believe in me? Right? They're so good. Like, the weak uh, moves are so good. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. <laughs> like, all of them are so evocative. Right? Yeah. Like, you really get a sense of the character and how they all tie together. Like, this game is so good. Well, and, like, I, I think really, it's really easy to tell, like, what is my my role in this story? Uh-huh. Like, what, you know, like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. It's so it's like they're so well defined, like they're so different, like your craft are so different from the crafters I make, but they're so like it's so clear what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I uh, love that. Yeah. OK. So the strong moves that cost a token as a lifeguard are get out of harm's way. Keep pushing forward even as everything tries to stop you. Get someone breathing again, even if they shouldn't be able to. Reinterpret the Lindworm's play in a way that directs the move at you. Oh my gosh. Right. Mm. Ask, wow. How can my character help yours heal? Ask, why is your character holding themselves back? Oh, you got two good asks there right? in the strong moves. Seriously. Oh, no. Regular moves. Take action, leaving yourself vulnerable. Shoulder a burden. Share genuine emotions with another. Provide useful advice. Tend to someone's wounds. Ask, how is your character hurting? Oof. And then the weak moves that gain a token. Invite the lindworm to act upon the group. Lose your temper at someone and ruin that friendship. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Give wow. up at the worst possible moment. Oh. <laughs> Botch or rescue in a potentially lethal way. Oh, no. <laughs> Up. <laughs> Ask, where are the waves pushing our characters? Oh, it's so good. Like, oh, oh my yeah. god, so really, good. really gotta, gotta need those tokens, right? Woof. Oh, uh-huh. well, if I yeah. want to save someone, yeah, yeah, goodness, yeah, I can imagine this being a situation where you're like out of tokens and you're like, I need to do yeah. something, well, but you can, like, you can always invite the landworm. Oh, oh no! <laughs> yep. No. Oh. Right, but yeah, like all the choices are so good. Yeah, yeah. amazing. All right. Uh, so my strong moves uh, that cost a token: uh, get out of harm's way, of course. Help someone find their voice. 
sing someone tired peacefully to sleep. Oh. Mm. Ease tensions with a song everyone knows by heart. Reinterpret the Lindworms play. Redirecting it with raw emotion. Oh, oh I love that one. But does that mean like you're going to like give the lindworm like some self-reflection and be like is this really what you want to do or like like, yeah or or emotion just like crying their like crying their heart out yeah Yeah. i can see like really like pouring myself into a song yeah and like the raw emotion of that song driving it to a completely different area oh Mm -hmm. so good oh um and then the ask is what does your character most want to hear from mine right now? <gasps> oh, that's good. Oof. That's a good that move. That's such a good one. Uh, my regular moves, uh, take action, leaving yourself vulnerable. Illustrate the power of a song. Call out and wait for a response. Step out of the light and pass the melody to someone else. Or hang your head over, hear the wind blow. And then my weak moves that give me a token invite the Linward to act upon the group. Get involved in a conflict that's none of your business and try to mediate. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I love that. Uh Uh-huh. Be overcome by someone else's fear, anger, or grief. Oh. I like that. Uh, And lead a song half-heartedly and lose its power forever. (sighs) Oh, my God. Yikes. Um, and ask, how has camp lost its magic for your character? Oh, these are good. No, I don't want to become disillusioned. Right. No weak move in, no weak moves ever. <laughs> no weak moves ever. <laughs> it's always the lid works. Oh, wait, to, to be Come fair, on. Miller, like, <sighs> declare your love to someone in a way that's just awkward. It's like, that's the best move. Like that, that's you so can, right? It's so right? good. I love it. And I love because it's like, well, it doesn't just have to be like romantic love. You can be like really weird about complimenting a friend. Yeah. Right. It's oh, so for sure. Good. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Amelia can roll in tokens. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. all the tokens because I'm just real awkward. Oh, I, can, so I, can, I can see my character like getting involved in conflicts pretty yeah. easily too. Oh, man. Or overwhelmed. Yeah. Especially with like all the campers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah. Oh, so, this is so good. Right? Is that it? Did we did we make mm-hmm. our people? We made our people, but we're not done yet. Because oh, now we yay. have to. Now there's the settings elements we choose from. Oh so, wow! Yeah. Um. These aren't these aren't as bad, but like it's good because they have the moves too. Because we play as them, and then um, if we have time, we can make campers too. Because that's fun and cool. And we can each make like well, we already have Toby, so we yeah. do have Toby. We yep. do have Toby. We still have to draw cards for Toby though. Um. But I don't know if we want to take turns reading or if there are. Yeah, the... we can. Okay. Yeah, because there's there's like the six elements, like the field and the woods and the lake okay. and all that. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. I feel like I, I should do. read the lake. Okay. But okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Um, I can start with a field if that's... Okay. Yeah, that Great. makes sense. That okay. sounds good. The field is young, bright, and full of life and victorious play. It's where the young warriors play under the hot sun and where happy-go-lucky teens fool around within the shade. It's a place for doing, not, talk, not for talking. And its heart is the rhythm of movement and innocent joy. The field is a place overflowing with energy. It desires decisive action, movement, fun, happiness, peace, fast travel, and community coming together. The field can be many fields in the summer camp, but it is always the field. Um, so, tips. Um, do you just be like, read through? Yeah, I think we'll go through the whole thing because it's because then we can finish it out. That makes sense. Sure. Um, tips. Create invitations to play with animals, with each other, with the land. Reward action in whatever form it takes. Ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. Um, Yeah, I kind of like that we made the field like right in the center too and that we put the stage there and everything. That feels like, you know, um, it feels like it really goes along with that play aspect. So um, pick up when a scene is set in the field, someone is frantic or hurried, or the mist clings to the grass in the morning and it feels right. Mm. Um, give away when you need to take a breather from the energy 
you need to frolic. Um, can you explain what that means? Like when it says pick up when and give away when? So because this is a belonging outside belonging, um, we don't have the GM. Um, and we besides the PCs and the NPCs, there's the setting elements also have moves and stuff. So what would happen is if like we're playing some some uh, some of the settings be like, OK, the crafter starts with the magic, but you give it away soon is a thing. But like mm-hmm. if like for like the field, it's like maybe Ryan and I are in a scene. It's set in the field and you're not playing. You would pick up the field and you would play like the moves as you okay. felt driven, um, mm-hmm. you know, and like the field would do something, act in a way and kind of drives the story a little bit between its moves. And then you put it down when the feels right, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so cool. that's how all the setting elements work out. Like, it's like, oh, it's like this feels, it's very, like, there's no hard line for most of these. It's like, this feels like this is the lake interfering or the magic or the field. And you mm-hmm. just... You do it. Cool. It's very, it is very cool. And it really, it's neat how it changes the story. Okay. So next we have to choose two aesthetic elements. Mm-hmm. Um, tall grass, freshly mowed, vibrant, mist covered, teeming with life, well trodden, untouched, damp, dewy, exuberant, or clearly loved. Mm. I, I do want to say that I don't think mist covered is right because like mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. pick up when the mist clings to the grass in the morning. Yeah. Um, so I feel like those kind of overlap a little bit. Yeah. I like, um, I like oh, clearly ahead. loved. Yeah. I was going to say too, like yeah. my two top choices were clearly loved and well trodden because yeah. we've made this the center yeah. of camp. Oh, I like that. Um, yeah. You know, so like I think it's, it's where all of the like big shows and presentations of like you know anytime anybody's like showing off the work that they've done i think it mm-hmm. happens on oh, that yeah. stage or in the field um and so i think it well trodden and clearly loved it's, it's also probably the me. like the practice yards yeah like yeah. you know all those scenes that are in the castle as in there's like always the scenes of the guards like sword fighting or something yeah. like that that are just like practicing their their sword play I feel mm-hmm. like the field is used for like drills and yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, working on your form. Yeah. And like I said, I think when we have like the final, you know, like when parents come to pick up the kids and we do the final thing at the end, yeah. like yeah. that's where we put the maypole yeah. and, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. that kind of stuff too. So like well that. trodden and clearly loved is very good. Mm-hmm. I love it. All right. And these moves. Yes. Okay. So the moves. I'm going to interrupt real quick. So yeah. setting elements do not need tokens. They can do any of their moves whenever. They don't gain or set tokens. They just can do them. Mm. Cool. All right. So the the field moves provide insight and fresh eyes on another setting element. Invite a moment of healthy communication. Resolve tensions through play. Cause injury without meaning to. Create an item that will help. Create a staff minor character. Provide another setting element's desire. Mm. After every move, ask, what do you do? I like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, like, yeah, like the fields, like happiness and helpfulness. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is tough. Oh, we'll go play a game of tag. And like, it's like, oh, this is getting tough. I'm like, oh, I know the campers go play tag in the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can read the woods. Okay. Cool. All right. The woods are an old place, far older than the camp, and filled with the aching pain only acquired from generations of trauma. The woods are dedicated to revealing, opening, and inspiring, but are also apathetic and filled with the weight of its own memories. If you treat the woods with respect, it might respect you. Live within the woods, and you'll become one of its own. The woods are a mournful place. It desires to be left alone, to bring together, to heal, to talk, to reveal, and to live independent of cruelty and misunderstanding. If there is a ropes keeper, use their answers for information here, uh, which there's not. Uh, Mm -hmm. Otherwise, answer those sections and write them down yourself. Okay, so tips. Act quietly through framing scenes and asking questions. Explore the majesty of something that has an emotional life independent from a human and idea of feelings and ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. All right. So pick up when a scene is set in the woods. 
something from the woods emerges into the camp. Uh, that's not ominous. <laughs> no. um, and the air is thick and misty and it feels right. Give away when the woods feel incomprehensible, deeply unsafe, or exhaustingly mundane to you. All right. And then I flip to the rope keeper for the impact because they would get to okay. choose them. But since we don't have one, choose the woods impact. Overwhelms with natural beauty. Reveals spoken lies with bird song, Honors pain with shared simile. Tells the troop with venerable silence. Keeps promises with sunlight. What was the one about lying? Reveals spoken lies with bird song. I like that one. Since like we have such a, a heavy yeah. like emphasis on honesty. I like yeah. the idea that the uh, woods reveal places. You know. Oh, that's good. And what type of bird song? Mm. I like uh like depending on the weight of the lie. Oh. It's a different oh, yeah. type of bird. But oh, like nobody's good. like fully figured it out. But like there's like this whole you know, if you hear birds sing a certain way after somebody makes a statement, they might be lying. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. That's good. So now we have to choose two aesthetic elements for the woods. Yeah. Um, so we have a choice between old growth, young, evergreen, deciduous, swamp, tangled, clear cut, surrounded, sprawling, intelligent, pained, healing, hopeful, or distrusting. There's a lot of good ones here. Right? It sets the mood of the woods mm -hmm. so much, too. Like, I, part of me is thinking between surrounded and sprawling are both good, but, like, kind of opposite choices. Yeah. I like sprawling. Yeah. I do like I sprawling do too. as well. Um. I kind of also like distrusting, um, um, given the birds singing mm, about lies. Yeah. Um, oh, I like the idea that, like, that's the kind of thing that the woods hear. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, you know, anytime birds are singing, it's like, oh, great, another person that you can't trust. Yeah, but, like, yeah. like out of the ordinary singing, right? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, like, this is definitely, like, that's weird. That's not the song Chickadee sang. Yeah, like there's right. yeah, there's the normal background bird tweeting that you hear all the time, but then like all of a sudden this <gasps> other thing kicks in. Can can soliloquy understand it? Because she's got augury. Oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. we talked about like you know Ryan mentioned it being kind of like unclear why they do that or right. like so i think it's enough that she can tell like um you know this is because somebody lied or even yeah. potentially like the mm -hmm. kind of lie but she can't it's not enough to be like this is the specific lie someone right. is telling yeah right. you know? it's like i can tell if it's if it's a big thing or if it's just a like yeah you sure that dress looks great on you right. you know <laughs> like <laughs> um, oh oh Wow, that's the that's the other side of like a culture of honesty, right? Mm -hmm. Right, like we say the hurtful things. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do like distrusting and sprawling. Yeah, yeah I okay. do too. That is a good combo. Um, yeah. And then and then for the moves for the woods, uh, perform your impact as written by the uh, ropes keeper. Uh, so that's the. Uh, the birds, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Lead people together, even if they don't want to see each other. Amazing. Uh, oh, create wow. a staff minor character. Reveal a new secret that must be grappled with. Oh. Or express the wood's pain. And then after every move, ask what you do. What do you do? Good. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Reveal yeah. a new secret that must be grappled with. Like, right. that goes so well with the birds singing when someone Right. Wants. And uh -huh. the culture of honesty and everything. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. really leaned into the honesty thing. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it oh. so much. Oh. Yeah. I have the lake. The lake is where secrets go to die. When it is present in the story, it seems to cover up and distort truth by swallowing it under the waves. Although the lake is not an agent of the linworm, it can often work in the linworm's favor, hiding its influence and putting others in danger. The lake is a hungry place. 
it desires to conceal, to feed on secrets, to smother, to kill, to grow beyond its banks, to seduce, to lure, and to keep the truth hidden beneath its waves. Anyone can start the lake except for the lifeguard. Mm. The lifeguard never ends up with the lake unless it makes perfect sense. Tips. Create good reasons for someone to either literally or metamorphically enter the lake. Be filled with the alien beyond what is expected. Ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. Pick up when a scene is set in or by the lake. The lake has wisdom or false wisdom it must offer the camp. The air is murky, misty, and it feels right. Give away when your character needs to keep a secret. The lake feels too dark and too exhausting to bear. And then choose two aesthetic elements. Shining, vast, rippling, misty, forbidden, muddy, algae-filled. Plentiful, deceiving, reflective, revealing, and hungry. Mm. I I kind of like reflective and deceiving. Yeah. Like it I like, like I like the both of those as well. Like it like yeah. it goes against the honesty and it gives like false visions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like deceiving, uh like we already have an example of uh of a uh, soliloquy getting drawn to the lake yeah. in a daze. Yeah. yeah. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and then reflective. I do like the reflective, like the, 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 the oh, eeriness the, of still water. It, yeah. And like the, and it's a distorted reflection too. It's not a true reflection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll write that down. That's very good. I'm gonna be so sad to not play this game. <laughs> Every time. Every, Every time. time. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> Ryan won't let me say it um in an actual recording that makes it out, but I always say that this is the foreplay of role playing games. <laughs> it's just it is. It is. It's but all it of... never goes anywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, the fanfic part is gonna be good. We'll do that. We'll uh-huh. get into that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that is the consolation prize right. we gave ourselves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So the moves of the lake work to keep a secret from being revealed, push people apart through coincidence or geography, fabricate a falsehood, create a staff minor character, feed the waves. After every move, ask, what do you do? And I like that when you create a character from like one of the settings elements, they're kind of like you want them to kind of act accordingly to those elements too. Yeah. So like a a, cre- a character created by the field is different from one created by the lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh man. Yeah. The lake's, Incredible. The lake's so good and so bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do the campers? Yep, the campers setting element. Oh, and then we okay. can you know maybe we'll we'll each build a character real quick from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The campers are a diverse body of fools, friends, and and toadies who love nothing more than to get up to terrible mischief and vex your existence. And you love every single one of them oh so much. The campers are young and full of confusion, but are also always capable of more than you'd expect. The campers are capable of helping you and each other, but can never understand the stakes of the lindworm. The campers are a group of kind souls. They desire freedom, autonomy, space to make mistakes, parental guidance, wisdom from elders, fun, jokes, and drama. The counselor never begins with the campers and should avoid picking them up. Mm. Tips. Create lovable campers who even at their worst are relatable and reveal their anxieties and capacities. Be helpful when expected to be useless, but fail when it's reasonable to fail. Play, fight, bicker, run around, have feelings, and be honest. Ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. Pick up when the campers speak up as a group. A camper should have their own voice heard. The air is warm and it feels right. Give away when you cannot understand why the kids are this way right now. (laughs) Okay, so all the time. Um, When you want to talk to a camper. Mm-hmm. For each camper, choose two genders, one from each column. Oh, these are so good too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, we have Toby. I'd like to start because Toby. we created Toby mm-hmm. already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about um, Toby. So uh, the first column that we have to pick from: masculine, feminine, full, empty, 
open, closed, ajar, adjacent, crossing past, above, below, in between, overflowing, or vacant. Mm. So, quick question. I would say one of us gets to make Toby, um, okay. and then we can make two more, just because it, 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 it'll just go quicker that way, because someone has a feel for what Toby is. I think Ryan should make Toby because yes, Toby. Uh, Ryan is Margaret hyphen James. <laughs> Margaret hyphen James. <laughs> Margaret hyphen James. Um, gosh, Toby. Um, I would say uh, overflowing. That's what I was going to say, too. Is a good uh, yeah. first column gender for Toby. Um, seems- and then the second column is uh, cicada, fox, eagle. Pillbug, worm, full wolf, dragon, robin, coyote, lion, moth, butterfly, tree. Um, I think Toby feels like a butterfly. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Those are the two that I would have picked. <laughs> yeah. Overflowing butterfly uh, sounds really good for Toby. Okay. Toby just seems like excited to be here. Yes. Yeah. And just everywhere and asking so many questions. Mm-hmm. And, just, oh. and now um, I would skip ahead. So on page 69, there's the character Sparks um by kazumi chin which is really cool so it's like um it's based on tarot or like a playing card and we, what i usually do is draw three cards and pick two that make the most sense mm. um but i think for ease we'll just do one and do you mind if i just draw and if oh, it doesn't free. if if it doesn't make yeah. sense we'll draw again because toby's our character and we do what we want sure. i got the four of spades uh this doesn't make sense they are introverted and they spend time alone that's yeah a, no 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 no. Nine of hearts. Okay. Nine of hearts is excited and their move is to fixate on a single desire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That feels that feels right. They excited. And then like like if they needed to like if we want to be like, oh gosh, what would Toby do right now? They just fixate on a single desire. Mm-hmm. And if you want, we can do this either way. We can draw a spark first and then decide the character or design the character um, and then draw the spark i think i'd like to draw the spark okay first how about i'll draw one let's see oh my gosh i didn't sh- shuffle very good because it's the same this is the seven of clubs alien misunderstand humans mm. oh interesting do you want me to draw how, i'll draw another one you can have a comparison sure so we got that one the king of spades inspirational urge others to action mm. Mm. um this whole table is very good like just just yeah. this stuff i kind of i kind of want to go with alien okay um, mm. i do like uh i do like that one yeah so we have to pick gender um, and a name gender and a name okay um I think I'm going to go with in between. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, hmm. I'm going to go with pill bug. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Oh, I'm just um, imagining like someone who's little now and a little shy and curl up on themselves. Yeah. Oh. Um, somebody's just not sure how to like yeah. fit in and how all of this works. Yeah. Is, it's like the it, first yeah. year. There's is this the kid that um, th- their parents kind of said this this will help you get out of your shell? Yes, yeah, I think so. Go mm-hmm. to this That's kind camp. of how I'm imagining them. Yeah. Is like they just they aren't super social at school and nope. like are. I actually think they've recently moved to a new town or a new state or something. Mm. Yes. Um, haven't made a lot of friends. They're having trouble kind of fitting into whatever the, you know, the culture of that area is because um, they're a little weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're already like a little weird where they came from. And then, you know, in this new place, it's just very different. You know, it's like that if if you moved from the Midwest to the South, it would be so different, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I think their parents were like, well, you know, you, you read a lot of fantasy books. Maybe you'll meet some kids here and, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. What are um, they called by? It can't be a real name then. Like, they're like, oh, do people call him Bilbo? Oh. 
<laughs> or like Hobbit. Yeah. Um, let's see here. That's good. I'm also looking at my category of Shakespearean names Ooh. here too. To see. <laughs> yeah. Um, and honestly, I kind of like Oberon. <gasps> oh. Mm. And they're in the Oberon bunk. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's that's very good. Oh, I love them. Okay. Okay. So that's then... Oberon. I really want like a like a really into it theater kid. <gasps> yeah. So, um, I just drew the six of diamonds from my character, mm-hmm. and it's mystical. Lead others in ritual. Mm. Hmm. I think. Yeah. No. I think this. Uh, this character will be that because that's uh, they're very into like the whole theme of the the theater and invoking. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm gonna go with full. Oh, full dragon. Oh yeah. Life's dream is to play the the lead in uh Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they keep coming up with more and more elaborate ways for like the three witches to do stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Would you say uh, full dragon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, full can, dragon. I can see that this is the person that everybody comes to if they're stuck on their character. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they just they just oh the Fay. Fay. They use Fay Fair pronouns. All right. Fay Fair. Faye just, yeah. And they are, Faye is known as, oh, oh, uh, they, they keep changing their name. So it's like right now they're Circe. They're going to be Hikate. They just keep, like, Faye names themselves after witches. Mm-hmm. It's the witch of the week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And they're, they won't answer to anything else. No, like, if you no. don't know what the name of the mm-hmm. week, like, you can call them whatever from last week and they won't turn around. Yeah. <sighs> they go... Faye was real mad the week someone called them uh, Faye, uh, Sabrina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see I can see that uh, this person is very um, like method. Yes. Oh, oh for sure. Extremely. The, Faye's a little bit older, too. They're like 13. So right, right in that real witchy mm-hmm. phase. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yeah. So. She, there's Cersei for now. Okay. Yes. We'll start out with Cersei. Amazing. Oh, it's so good. I love them. I love it. I know. And you, as you play, you create more character, like more campers as you need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the best. All right. The moves for the campers. Show someone starting something new. Remind everyone what they're fighting for. Reveal vulnerability through reflection. Create a camper character. Introduce drama and contention. Oh, I love the ability to introduce drama. <laughs> right? Uh, after every move, ask, what do you do? Amazing. It's so good. Oh, I should have left that one for somebody else and done the next one. I know. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I should have had me only read the magic. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, the magic is next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to take the magic, uh, Nicole, or do you want me to? I can take the magic. Okay. The magic is a force, something that pervades all of existence and inhabits the secret parts of the world where humans haven't been. To guide the magic is a process known as crafting, something that only can be done carefully and precisely. The magic is only as violent as its users, but can also be capricious and odd force. No one knows that the magic is real, but it feels like it is in its quiet and subtle ways. The magic is a tricky force. It desires stories, adventures, heroes, villains, art, beauty, joy, and above all, improbable coincidences. The crafter begins with the magic, but you put it down quickly. Tips. Push for odd coincidences and unexpected events that slam disconnected plot elements together. Never discover whether or not the magic is real. You help weave the story into something cohesive. Utilize that. Ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. Pick up when the story needs a little tying together. There's some electricity in the air, and it feels right. Give away when you want to ask the magic for help. The magic is taking up too much space. Choose two visual metaphors. Fireflies, cicadas, flaming embers, smoke, mist, flashlights, the moon, the stars, eyes in the darkness, a specific knobbled tree. Mm. So good. I feel like every time like Soliloquy uses the magic, you'd see it. Or like when the magic acts, you see this. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. Oh, wow. 
What's so good? Um, I like the idea of mist or smoke, just yeah. as something that like obscures the view a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. For this, I like, for I this, think I like mist more than smoke. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah, like, I like just, like, the foreboding of eyes in the darkness. Like I can, I can just, I can just, I, I get like a visceral like. <laughs> TBGB's yeah. feel to that but like I don't know if I want that as part of the magic. What about the stars then? Yeah, Cuz the then stars. it's just lights in the darkness. Yeah. I, I like the stars um especially something given like astrology and something like that yeah. as a way to like mm-hmm. kind of predict. <gasps> oh, you know? yeah. Oh, I just think that, that goes with the augury. Is mm-hmm. that sometimes like your visions is like the magic shows you like pat- astrological patterns? Yeah, I, I think, like that. I think that makes sense. That's good. Plus, we've got the stargazing hill. Yeah, it's true. Oh, it all comes back together. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Moves act through something unaware, provide unexpected tools, create a villain minor character, Ooh. create a savior minor character, provide a moment of impossibility when needed most. After Amazing. every move, asked, "What do you do?" So good. Yeah. It's so good. In my game, we create a villain minor character for my character to kiss. Oh, <laughs> oh correct. Of course. Of course. That's the, best the, that's part. the correct way to play. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so good. That's just how games work. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I have this power. I picked up the magic. I made the character I wanted to create, and it did. Uh huh. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This game's so Amazing. powerful. <laughs> Um, it looks like we have one last setting element. Yeah. The, the strangeness. The strangeness are the old creatures of the world who arrived to this barren earth long before we did and carry with them the rats and pests and squirming pieces of faraway lands. They have blood on their hands, but they do not allow it to phase them. Preferring instead to dwell on what could have been, the strangeness knows about things they shouldn't and have many secrets and truths to offer, if you'll listen. Sometimes the strangeness is just a possum that keeps walking after getting hit by a car. Sometimes it is an entire commune beneath the hills with their own laws and a god made of broken concrete. They are not the lindworm, but perhaps they can help. Read the act instructions for whether or not the strangeness should be in play, or if there's something more explicit, such as a strange setting element found later in this book. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So tips. Be subtle at first. So subtle that people don't realize you're playing as the strangeness. Oh, that's wild. Mm -hmm. Imply something larger that no one can understand. Imagine something more bizarre than you started with. Ask compelling questions and build on the answers others give. Pick up when the world is alien and uncomfortable and it feels right. Give away when you need to confront something profoundly odd. All right. So keep track of strange events. Whenever you think an event meets with a specific theme, mark it on the strangeness table. When you consult the strangeness table, follow whichever has the most tallies by it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's a nice strangeness table down below. Uh, Moves for shadow strangeness. uh, Decide something about the world. Offer an unexpectedly useful item without your presence being known. Hint at a secret that changes everything. Quietly push people in weird directions. Cause injury under under mysterious circumstances. Or create a minor character with ominous intentions. And then, of course, after the move, ask, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Um, And then the strangeness table. If the strangeness is in play, keep track of the themes of the game using this table. Whenever a strangeness has more than three tallies, its associated themes um, begin to foreshadow that strangeness using the aesthetic elements next to the name. Um, So yeah, it has what? The Murder of Crows, Mm -hmm. which is Destiny and Heartbreak. Um, And it looks like Feathers, Objects in Groups of Three, Tangled Thread are the uh, 
the aesthetic elements, right? Yep. Yep. So as we'd be playing, like what would happen is if we were, there's a lot of heartbreak coming up and we're like, oh, we notice that and make a tally. Yeah. And then eventually the murder of crows would come into play. Oh, yeah. And then which our... I, I like because the, the birds are potentially the thing yeah. revealing when people are lying right? to, uh, which mm-hmm. I feel like really, um, you know, it goes along with tangled thread and heartbreak. And... Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Our lady oubliette, cold and forgetting. Um, and the, the aesthetic elements are unseasonably cold, unrecognized kids. Fuzzy memories. Interesting. Mm. Um, the slumbering beast, which are dreams and conquest. The aesthetic elements are haunting dreams, omens, mist from holes in the ground. Mm. Cool. And the underhill king, uh, the underworld or authority. Uh, and the elements are dirt, strange calls from the mountain, and hoof prints. Ye. Yeah, but that's that's it. And then as oh. we would play, eventually we would unlock some of the strangeness elements. And there's a couple mm-hmm. aesthetic elements we would pick for them. Yeah. Um or like their desires, or like the more important thing is their desires. And then as we'd continue to play, we would unlock the lindworm elements. Mm-hmm. Um I'll just, you know, I'll just name the lindworm elements real quick. It's the bones. The bones are the flayed body of roadkill, pets, and farm animals that have been transformed into the mocking, hungry servants of the lindworm. They exist only to remind us all of the pain that the lindworm has caused and the nauseating reality of what exists directly underneath our skin. And the other one is the wolves. Mm. The wolves were once a noble people, their hearts tied to the land and the winter snow woven in their fur. The lindworm came and, disguised as one of them, flayed each and every one of them in this land. Now the wolves, lost and confused, wander these ancient woods, enacting the same violence forced onto them. And That's we would so pick, good. Yeah. So through play, we would pick those things. But yeah, now character creation and world building is done. Oof. Oh, so good. Yeah. Oh, what a creepy, what a creepy game already. Right? Oh, it's We haven't so even good. played. Right? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh man, and then yeah, like, and then characters can die and come back as a different character. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, uh, that was that was world building and character creation for Sleepaway. Amazing. <laughs> this is so good. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I just had a moment of silence <laughs> for everything that just happened here. I yeah. know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us for our Sleep Away character creation episodes. This was who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know another word for it. <sighs> very, very appropriate for post Halloween, right, pre Christmas. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly what you think of uh, for Thanksgiving. You know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I am thankful I am not at this summer camp right now. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, right. Um, the summer court. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicole, do you want to remind uh, remind people where they can find you online? Sure, you can listen to me on the Misfits of Space podcast, where I play uh, Lido Akutan. Um, this current series um i can sometimes be found on the redacted files or on the sporadically released uh jack sam and mama with my two kids um you can also follow me on twitter i'm I'm saying that um for right now i post things that make me happy (laughs) um there's that so i'm at phaedra 220 um or my happy place which is tumblr again at phaedra 220 um yeah wonderful Well, thank you again, Nicole, Ed. Thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. So, Sleep Away, uh, we were told on our Discord that uh, this game was originally inspired by a LARP camp that Jay Dragon had attended. Yeah, we, I don't think any of us knew that before no. we started the recording. Um, so I, I love that. Shout yeah. out, 
Jay. Um, I don't know if yours was a well-funded Renaissance LARP camp. I suspect <laughs> not. Um, but we do appreciate the fact yeah. that we we dug into this particular... I thought that was a really hilarious coincidence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, what sort of summer camp would I love to go to? Right. Right. LARP. That sounds amazing. Yeah, no, I I uh, I really enjoyed this series a lot. the The world building and character creation is just phenomenal. The uh, it it almost feels poetic at times, like Mm -hmm. the stuff that we're selecting for our characters. Like, especially when you get to that gender bit, uh, it's just like some really cool interpretive stuff going on uh it's it's fascinating seeing this stuff in these later uh uh more recent games out there where people are pushing the boundaries of stuff yeah i know i definitely saw a conversation recently where people talking about like picking gender in games where it's like you know you can pick any pronouns and then you know they're like yeah which voice do you want or like do you want to wear a dress or no right and they're like okay now you've just like undid everything that you, uh-huh. do, you know like that you you get all of these options and then it's like uh yeah are you a man or a woman <laughs> like, Basic, basically right right <laughs> it's like oh you were so close i know i know and, and then i had a thought this morning uh that my character margaret james uh must have been a subconscious pull for me because uh margaret is a character that james damato plays on campaign skyjacks um, Margaret's a very, also a pretty common name. <laughs> true, but but the combo of Margaret and James I smashed see, together is what I'm talking it. about. Margaret James. Uh, Margaret James. Yeah. Margaret so James. Mongo uh, James. Mongo Heaven James. James, if you're listening, which you're probably not because you are super busy, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, that one's for you <laughs> accidentally. Accidentally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, before we head out, we have some calls to action. Uh, First up, please check out my guest spot on the Epic Levels Mad Dungeon podcast. Um, They're on Spotify under the Epic Levels podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, You can find the Mad Dungeon episodes. Otherwise, on Apple Podcasts, Mad Dungeon does have its own feed. Um, My episode is the Malort Conspiracy. So if you love people ruthlessly making fun of the city of Chicago, if you love my sand to jello continuum of game design if you love bad mexican food or if you're a big fan of multi-level marketing schemes have i got the episode for you (laughs) um (laughs) there is also a full written and illustrated version of the adventure it's a system neutral adventure that we made up um based on some (laughs) mad libs style prompts I had so, good. so much fun. It's the episode turned out great. Um, and you can find the adventure on the Epic Levels website too if you want to play it with your own group. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we'll get some links to that in the show notes. You can check that out if you want. Um, also, if you haven't heard any of it yet, uh, go over to the One Shot Podcast public feed and check out episode one of the Starwall Odyssey of the Lucky Finn campaign. Uh, James put a snippet of that first episode out there for everyone to listen to. Uh, really sounds amazing. Um, and if you do say so yourself, if I do say so myself, <laughs> no, I, I listened, I listened back just uh, a couple days ago and I'm like, this, this is good. This is good stuff. Wow. This Ryan uh, guy's really got I it. Know, I know. Well, uh, good source material too. Yes. yes uh, obviously. honestly, um, uh, the next few episodes are a little bad audio quality because they had to go and record somewhere else mm. uh, outside of the studio. Gotcha. But um, uh, aside from that, uh, it's top notch. Uh, you've got Ali, Drew, James and Mel being just such great performers. Um, and you'll be able to hear uh, everything else from this show on the One Shot Secret Archive. Uh, which is the $5 and up level of uh, the One Shot Network Patreon, uh, which we're all technically a part of as well. Yes. Speaking of Patreon, now is a great time to check out our Patreon. We know that money can be a bit tight, especially as we get toward the holiday season. Fully Mm -hmm. understand. Um, So we've been doing a little extra lately for our patrons of the show, uh, even at the $1 level. 
So for just a dollar a month, you get access to all of the bonus outtakes from our episodes that that don't fit in our regular episodes because Mm -hmm. we're trying to keep them at a reasonable length. Uh Um, And you will also get access to special chit chat episodes um, where Ryan and I chat about life before we start recording. Mm -hmm. We always kind of chit chat about stuff and we decided to start recording the actual conversations. Um, They've been a lot of fun. Uh, It's a great way to get to know us better. um, And you'll be getting those pretty much every week. Yeah. At the $5 level and higher, um, we'll be giving everyone an ad free feed Um, early release episodes and bonus episodes where we learn about other games, mostly micro games at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, And through, we do that through our lens of character creation, same as always, but also a little bit of actual play. We, you, you, you need to become a $5 patron to hear us actually play the characters that Uh we make. Um, (laughs) 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 Uh, You can check all of that out at patreon.com slash character creation cast. And once you do, we will thank you personally, like we are going to do for Lieutenant. Thank you for your continued support. Mm-hmm. Uh, David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Eric Bontz, many thanks to you. And we appreciate your support. Matt Newton, thank you. We appreciate the support of Shadim Cabal. Thank you so much for helping us out. And Daryl Holiday II, we're happy to have you here with us. Thank you. The Shyest Barbarian, thank you so much for your support and for all of your involvement in our Discord. It's mm-hmm. always, I believe they were the one that told us about the LARP camp, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I think so. No, I see, Danny, now I'm gonna be Danny to- was. Danny oh, was. Okay. I was like, I'm, now I'm going to be totally wrong and I'm going to feel uh-huh. bad about it. You're right. I'll, I'll You're right. This part. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Sweeney, thank you for your support. Lurkin McGinnis, you rock. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your support. Rob Fletcher, thank you. Kevin Brown, thank you for your continued support. You are wonderful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And many thanks to Tentacle Duck, uh, which is very fun to say. uh, And I'm glad I get to say it this time. I didn't get to say my thing about how it's such a great name. Ah. So good. Okay. (laughs) Uh, thank you to all of you and to all future patrons your assistance is really make a difference Ryan got his microphone which you can hear all about in in last week's chit chat Uh Um, Ryan Ryan loves his new microphone (laughs) it's so nice it's debatable whether he loves it more than his children we'll find out (laughs) he doesn't have to pay for college for his microphone so it might be wedding out right now we'll see (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so thank you for making that possible for Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it means we're able to afford keeping the show going every month. All the other little tidbits we need. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and finally, if you aren't able to support the show financially, there is an easy way to help us out. That doesn't cost anything but your time. And that's to leave a rating and review on the likes of Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or Podcast Addict. Um, or you can leave just a rating on Spotify. Uh, especially if you want to get a nice little gift for Amelia for her birthday, uh, which is coming up in a week or so from this episode. Yay, birthday. I would love more reviews for my birthday. Absolutely. It's it's on my wish list. We will read out any five-star reviews that you leave um, right here on the show, like we are about to do for this one from Yukiro Shini on Apple Podcasts. It's titled Unexpectedly Spectacular. I wasn't sure if I was going to like a podcast about character creation, but these two fantastic hosts really make it utterly enthralling. The only flaw with the characters they create is that now I find myself invested in a story slash game that will never happen. For the first time, I understand why people create fan fiction. I can't wait for the next bit of fan fiction fodder. (laughs) Us two. Us Us two. two. (laughs) We... uh, like honestly, sometimes I'm like, why we made a mistake making this podcast? We did not think it through. Uh-huh. Um, but now it's it's just part of the pain that we have to suffer for. But our you art. have to suffer for your art. Yeah, uh-huh. it's true. It's true. And this is the, <laughs> this is the way we have chosen to suffer. Absolutely, and <laughs> I, I, it's probably one of the better ways to do so. Uh, but uh, thank you so much. For that review, uh, it r- really warmed uh, our days when we when we were able to read that. So, absolutely, thank you so much. 
And that's it for today's episode, everybody. Uh, join us next time for a phenomenal discussion episode with Cole about this fantastic game. And thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, take some relaxing breaths to loosen up those shoulders, drink some water, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us, under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.